Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, look, man. Earl Spence. Earl Spence is today's Arturo Gotti, Mickey Ward, Diego Corrales. And I mean that with all sincerity. Now, you may be saying, man, Hood, what made you decide to come and say something like this? And I'm going to tell you why. Because I sat there and I watched last night Jamel Charlo have an opportunity at greatness, at legacy. And he chose not, not, to leave, not to leave it all in the ring. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand. I understand boxing, man. I understand sparring. I understand getting hit. I understand what that power does to it. I understand what speed can do to you in the ring. I can understand what happens when your confidence is gold, when you start questioning yourself. I understand when you have a fighter who is like, look, I'm about to make all this money. No one's going to fault me because I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in a weight class I probably shouldn't be at, and I'll probably get a pass. So whatever. I'm not going to get in here and get damaged. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to survive. I'm going to go ch full Chukadzian, and I'm going to get to the end, of the end of the fight with all my faculties intact with no damage and drop back down to my weight class and pick up where I left off, right? I understand. I understand. But let me tell you something. Jamel Charlo, I think it's going to be hard for that man going into his next fight, especially if they're trying to do something on pay-per-view. What, what he should have done, in my opinion, I'm not saying go get killed. Like, don't be stupid. But damn, man, give yourself a chance to win. Don't. You, the, the fans are so, they're not very understanding. You got to let your hands go in there. So when we look at Jamel Charlo and Earl Spence, we start talking about who has more heart. That's why I did the YouTube short. Hey, man, Earl Spence. And I was sitting there today while I was driving thinking about this, right? And I'm like, damn, man. Earl Spence left it all in the ring. There's no one. No one is questioning Earl Spence's heart. Earl Spence wanted to beat Terrence Crawford. Earl Spence was trying. Earl Spence was trying. He was trying right up until the referee stopped the fight. That man was, he was outgunned. He, he, he was flinching. He, he was falling for the feints. He, he knew he was going to get hit, but he still let his hands go. At no point in that fight did Earl Spence sit there and clam up and go full defense defense mode. No, you have two choices when you're in the ring. You fight or you flight, okay? And he went full fight mode, the whole fight, the whole fight. Jamel Charlo, from, it seems like from the time the fight was announced, he was in flight mode. Uh, you look at the, see now it all makes sense. He was on cruise control, man, on flight mode uh, during the press conferences. Not really saying nothing, not you know, not talking trash, and just he he, he kind of chirped up a little bit, you know, like the, the fight week, and I'm an effing lion, and this and that. Well, yo, lion, why didn't you roar? Why didn't you roar, lion? Because Earl Spence, that man was roaring. You ever watch what happened in a pack of lions when uh, the leader of the pack starts to? Get a little older, them young lions decide that they want to be in charge. And the once big, strong lion um, has a fight for his position, and he fights to the death. You ever watch them lions, them young lions, how they tear his ass apart? But that old lion, he keeps fighting. He keeps fighting. He don't matter how, what is going on, he fights till he has nothing left. And then them young lions, man, get a hold of his tail, his leg, and one clap down on his neck, and they kill him. That's what Earl Spence is. He going to fight, and you're going to have to eventually get him to where he just don't have the energy, and you sit there, man, they lock down on his neck, and then they kill him. And that's how Earl Spence is. He's that old lion that's going to fight to the death, and that's why we respect him. Diego Corrales is that lion who would have fought to the death, and, 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 and well, who, who did fight. Until basically, you know what I mean, he had nothing left. That's why people respect him. Blood and guts warrior Arturo Gotti. Fight until the man has nothing left. You know, like the referee and corner had to save him from himself. And he still want to keep going. Uh, Mickey, Mickey Ward is another one of those guys, man. They got to fight until he just can't or the referee stops it. It's not going to be, uh, uh, it's mercy stoppages. 
like Jesus, this man is going to die in the ring. Because we don't stop. We don't stop him. He won't stop himself. Then you come across Jamel Charlo, all that lion talk. Let me tell you something. You out in the jungle, right? Lion, the king of the jungle. Since when you've seen a lion get nipped, nipped in the ass by some little baboon, and then the lion run and climb up a tree and be scared to come down. Let me tell you something. Ain't no monkey gonna come and bite a lion in the butt and the lion gonna sit there now and decide he afraid of the monkey. It could be a whole damn squad of baboons. Although they have them long, sharp teeth. Let them come playing around. Or a hyena. Say them lions, them lions get, they, get a hold of a hyena and break his neck, break his back. No lion gonna sit there and run, man. Lions ain't stupid either, but I tell you what, they may they may get out the way of danger. But you you when he has that opportunity, he go if whatever is there troubling him, oh he gonna make make sure they pay. And I'm not saying Jamel Charles shouldn't have got out of danger, use his legs at times. But at some point, champ, stop and fight. You mad cause you got a little nipped in the butt a little bit. You ain't that. Uh, anybody out here who wants to say something positive about Jamel Charlo and that performance, I, I got to say to you: hold your horses. Let's not take it to the stupid. Now, I don't think he was. I don't think he was a, a, a afraid of Canelo. I don't. I think. I think. I really think. One is he that payday, that payday, that payday was one of the issues. Uh, the other thing I really feel with Jamel is he almost accepted the fact that, hey, I'm coming up from a low weight class. I'm not supposed to win. Um, but he did get himself in shape, okay? And he, and I think in that first run, I think he, he was like, I'm going to try to bring it out. But I think when he got touched, he felt that power. Um, but, I, but for someone who has prided himself on keep running your mouth, um, you know, lions only, I'm an animal, this is for the culture, this is for the this. I mean, yo, my man, I mean, he was in that ring full Chikadzian versus, versus Bootsins. And, um, and he can be critical of fighters, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's fair to have a conversation about it. Not taking away from what he's done at 154, but he, I just wish he would have fought, fought him. You can't beat Canelo at, by, by running. You look at Earl Spence, man. That's like that's like Terrence Crawford. You think you're gonna run from Terrence Crawford the whole fight, man, and think you're gonna beat him? You gotta stand and fight him. You got to stand and mean machine Terrence Crawford. You gotta stand and Gamboa Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stand and, and, and Jose Benavides Terrence Crawford. Yeah, you may lose, but fight him. Because if not, it's gonna it's not gonna it's just it's gonna make you look horrible and you do nothing but frustrate him. And he go, he's going to keep coming at you. So my thing is, when you look at what Arturo Gatti brought to the ring, Mickey Ward brought to the ring, Diego Corrales brought to the ring, those guys would, would rather be carried out on a stretcher than, than, to not, to, than to quit or go home at night and rest their head saying, you know what, I didn't leave it all in the ring. And Earl Spence is that same person. Earl, Earl Spence has nothing to feel bad about. And matter of fact, this thing now, I understand what people were talking about Earl Spence and Jamel Charlo if they fought. I remember before people were like, man, Earl Spence would beat Jamel or Earl Spence had more heart than Jamel. I didn't quite get that conversation. But then again, I'm not in those gyms. I'm like, why would somebody do that? Them guys are like brothers. And they're, they're close, don't get me wrong, but obviously people close to both of them man, must have seen something that that, that we're, not, we're not privy to. But I tell you what, to me, it showed up last night. Um, because Earl Smith made good money. Earl Smith made good money against Terrence Crawford. But he sure wasn't in there looking to uh, just get paid and not worry about fighting to win. He, 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 he tried. Uh, and when you look at uh, Jamel Charlo, Earl Smith was going for undisputed. Charlo was going up two weight classes for undisputed at 168. So, I mean, it was kind of a similar situation, you know what I'm saying? But But I get it. You know, Earl Spence was killing, you know, yeah, he had to cut, his weight cut was a little tougher than 
than Crawford's. And Jamel had to gain, had to put on some weight. So, so weight was an issue, one gaining and one losing. Uh, but the one who lost, he still made, made an effort to, to try to win, and Jamel didn't. So I, I don't know what to think. I understand uh, coming off of over a year layoff to go and fight someone like Canelo, that's pretty ballsy. So that showed that he was a lion um, in that regard when you think about him stepping up to the challenge. But it's not hard to, 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 to go from pussycat to lion when they're going to give you uh, 20, 30 million, 100 million, 200 million, whatever the hell that money he's going to make. Not hard to go from pussycat to a lion. Uh, to accept the fight, but to get in the ring, you go from lying to pussycat real quick when the real deal starts. That's what I always say. If you're going to be Al Capone, go all the way. But Jamel back at 154, I think Jamel will be just fine, man. But for the rest of his life, he's going to have the historians and the next generation talking about this fight with Canelo Alvarez, how he went in there and didn't give himself a chance. Uh, to win and his corner was even telling him don't get me wrong Derek James like you know like my girl uh, Leticia is always saying you know Derek she feels Derek James doesn't have a plan B or C it's just he's just a plan A for fire, fighters to come forward and when the things get tough in the ring he doesn't know how to, to, to help his fighters make adjustments I don't know if I agree with that but I, I understand why she says that because you can look at you know, just the struggles Earl Spence has had with Crawford and not really making an adjustment, continue to come straight forward. Frank Martin, when he fought that um, European Olympian, and he just basically just out at uh, athleticismed him and just outwilled him and just out gunfired him. Uh, but he wasn't able to make the adjustments necessary to make the fight easy. And you look at the coach, you look at the trainer, and you know, you gotta you know, poke him in the eye for that. But with that being said, uh, Earl Spence, Jamel Charlo, who deserves, who deserves to be praised for their performance in the biggest fights of their career? I'm going to have to praise the guy who went out on his shield, and that's Earl Spence. And when I when I talk about that, he just, he, he chose to get in there, and he chose not to quit, and he chose to fight. Jamel Charlo went the Ryan Garcia route. Ryan Garcia made a choice to quit. Yeah, he got hit, no doubt, but he said it. This, this is, these aren't my words. Ryan Garcia said he quit. He didn't want to continue. He knew, he knew if he continued, he'd get hurt. You think Earl Spence didn't know if he continued, he wouldn't get hurt? Earl Spence could have stopped that fight after that second round. After that second round, Earl Spence knew, uh-oh, the real deal is starting. He, he pushed through it. Third round, horrible. Every round after that was, you know, a massacre. You know like they have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That was the Nebraska Southpaw Massacre. You know what I'm saying? That's how crazy that was, what Terrence Crawford did to Spence. Crazy that was what Mayweather did to Arturo Gatti. Crazy that was what Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward did to each other. Crazy what Castillo did to Corrales and Corrales came back. Crazy what Mayweather was doing to Corrales and Corrales kept fighting. And then Jamel Charlie gets in there and he, the little, the little baboon or hyena gives him a little nip in his lion butt, and he, the lion turns into a pussycat. Uh, and for those who say, oh, well, you get in the ring, and you fight Canelo, and let's see what you do. No, my man. If I get in the ring at age 48 now, and I train and I get in fighting shape, I only know one way. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I, 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 I went through it before. Not fighting no damn Canelo. Come on, be stupid. Oh, you fought Canelo. You're not stupid. I've been in them situations. And when the real deal start, it's not fun. I've been on both sides. When the real deal start for somebody else, he ain't, he ain't want nothing to do with it. But I've been in that shit. And my, I'm telling you, man, my, my pride wouldn't let me just go out like that. Got to fight, man. Uh, you know, you're getting hurt and shit like that. Well, then, you know, it is what it is. But you, 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 the only way, when you got somebody who getting their confidence up every round, 
only way to stop that is you got to make them think twice. You got to stand and hold your ground and just get flat, flat footed and let your hands go get your weight behind your shots. You got to hit them with something to make them say, I ain't running in on that dude. You know what I'm saying? We saw this weekend with Frank Sanchez and that guy he fought. First round, Frank Sanchez was out there doing the business. He almost got his ass knocked out in that first round. He came back and got the knockout, but that first round, boy, ooh, he got, he got, he, he got uh, tranquilized. Then he came back and was pulling the guy's head down and throwing up because Frank Sanchez knew he had to take extreme measures so he wouldn't get hurt again. So he fought a little dirty. Referee let him get away with it. It is what it is. But that being said, Earl Spencer's today's Arturo Gotti, Mickey Ward, Diego Corrales. Guys want to go out on their shield. Oh, uh, what's his name too? Um, Deontay Wilder. Whenever, you know, he's another one. Whether you like him or not, that man didn't have to sit there and take that beating like he did. You know who else is Eubank Jr. He wants to take his beating. He wants to get in the ring, and if he dies, he dies, you know. I'm not saying it's smart, but what I'm saying is when it comes to boxing and boxing fans and the boxing community, and they're watching these guys get in the ring, getting paid gazillions of dollars, who talk a lot of trash. You know, we just expect you to get in there and back it up. And if you come out of the Lions only camp, let's see what's up. I'll tell you what, Jamal Charles up next. Uh, he's fighting uh, Jose Benavides. What's going to happen when the real deal starts? Because Jose Benavides is going to fight him. So we're, going, we're going to see what he's made of. But he ain't make, he, he, he shouldn't go the route that his brother went because he's not getting paid. You know, $500 million or whatever the hell Jamal got paid. He's not getting paid that kind of, kind of dope. But that being said, put some respect on... Uh, uh, Earl Spence's name, and you know we still gotta applaud Jamel Charlo for getting the life-changing fight. Uh, but to me, he dropped the ball. I'm not saying he's not a great fighter, so I'm make sure because y'all hear what you wanna hear when y'all you know get on these little videos. Y'all hear what you wanna hear. Well, tell me he's a great fighter. I just said last night he had an opportunity to just underscore how great he is and how much heart he has to go up and really try to win a fight. And when the real deal started, he chose to go Chikadzia versus Boots Ennis and just cruise and not get hurt. And, and that's why a lot of people are sour with him. And I think if he has a pay-per-view event, unless it's against Tim Zoo in Australia, I just think his numbers are going to suffer. I'm just being honest because people are going to, you're just as good as your last fight. And they're going to look at that and say, hey, man, the lion turned to a pussycat. It is what it is. He stopped roaring and he started meowing. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to see here a lion meow. We want you to get in there roar. Now, yeah, I don't hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Raw, lion, raw. Anyway, I'll keep cool. I'm in the breeze.